Hi. So uh, in, in the last couple of videos, we saw the uh, general structure of the um, classification of topological phases of uh, uh, insulators and superconductors. And uh, uh, we uh, also highlighted a few examples, and we saw how to derive the corresponding topological invariant. And uh, we discussed the corresponding edge states. In this video, we're going to delve a little bit deeper into this issue of edge states and uh, uh, their correspondence to the uh, topological properties of the bulk. In particular, we're going to discuss an, an important concept, which is uh, anomalous edge states, which are the special edge states that appear in a given uh, topological phase um, uh, once the, the bulk has a, a, a belongs to a given topological phase. So uh, the important uh, concept here that we mentioned already in passing is the concept of bulk edge correspondence. OK, so namely, that's the idea which holds throughout the periodic table that a, a given a, a topological phase in the bulk of non-interacting electrons, a, a quadratic Hamiltonians, a, a corresponds to a particular unique gapless edge state that appears whenever the system has open boundaries. OK, and uh, a, we're going to introduce this uh, notion of a, a, an, an anomalous edge theory. So what's an anomalous edge theory? Suppose we have a gap system in the bulk, which we're always discussing. Okay, so we have some d-dimensional system that has a, a bulk gap. The surface is a d minus one dimensional system. And even though the bulk is gapped, the, the uh, boundary may be gapless. And in fact, if the bulk is topological, the boundary is going to be gapless. So uh, the boundary is going to be characterized by some kind of low energy theory of subgap states of the d minus one dimensional boundary. And we say that this d minus one dimensional theory that uh, describes the uh, a, a subgap edge states is a, a anomalous if this kind of theory cannot uh, appear in a standalone d minus one dimensional system with the same symmetry. Okay, so once again, uh, we have some kind of low energy theory that describes the surface of our a, a d dimensional topological phase. And we call this uh, the theory that corresponds the, to these edge states anomalous if this uh, a, a theory has a property that can never appear in a standalone, a, a, a standalone d minus one dimensional system given a set of symmetries. And we're, we're going to see many examples of this. Okay, so uh, a, the, the statement is that every phase and every, uh, every non-trivial uh, topological phase that uh, is uh, within the periodic table uh, is characterized by a, a unique anomalous gapless edge states. Okay, and this is the uh, bulk edge uh, uh, correspondence or bulk boundary correspondence. Okay, so uh, uh, let's uh, go into some examples. Okay, so the first example that we're, we're, we're going to discuss is that of chiral edge states that appear at the boundary of a two-dimensional churn insulator. Okay, so uh, here's our churn, in churn insulator. Suppose that our churn insulator is living on a half plane. So this is a semi-infinite plane, and it has a boundary here at y equals zero. It's, an, uh, it's infinite in the x direction. And uh, this is a churn insulator. Suppose that this churn insulator has an invariant nu equals one in the bulk. It has a churn number of one. So that implies that at the boundary, we should have one chiral edge state, which goes all the way from x equals minus infinity to plus infinity. And this is a chiral edge state, meaning that it's only moving in one direction. Say, if nu is equal to plus one, this uh, chiral edge state is moving to the right. So uh, uh, now we're going to argue that this chiral edge state is an example of an uh, anomalous one-dimensional uh, uh, theory. Okay, so uh, it's described by a, a, an anomalous one-dimensional theory. Okay, so uh, this is what the spectrum of the system might, might look like as a function of kx. Okay, so our system is semi-infinite. It's uh, clearly not translationally invariant in the y direction, but it is translationally invariant in the x direction along the edge. So we can draw our spectrum a, a, as a function of kx. Suppose for simplicity that our system has only two bands in the bulk. Okay, now, uh, uh, so at every given kx, okay, our spectrum would be composed of the projection of the two 
uh, bands onto that particular kx. So there are two continua of states where the, the bulk, uh, bulk bands are. They're separated from each other by a finite gap. But a, a, a in, in a particular range of momenta along the edge, a, there's going to appear a subgap state necessarily, which is the chiral edge state. Okay, so this is this uh, red line over here corresponds to the uh, corresponding to the chiral edge state. Now, a, a, this uh, we can see that this state is chiral because uh, a, the slope of the uh, spectrum as a function of kx corresponds to the group velocity. So the uh, velocity of this edge state. Vkx is, uh, as always, is equal to the uh, a derivative of the energy with respect to kx. And uh, a, the spectrum of the edge state is uh, sloping, a, a has a positive slope. This corresponds to a positive velocity. And at this edge, there's no corresponding a, a state that's moving in the opposite direction. So this is, this is why we, we call this a chiral edge state. Now, of course, if our system was finite in the y direction, so suppose now that our system is actually a strip extending from here only up to here, so now this line is actually also an edge, another edge. Of course, in the other edge, there has to be a counterpropagating chiral edge state moving in the opposite direction. And the spectrum of this uh, other surface would just look like that. Okay, the chiral edge state always connects in energy the two bands. By the way, it's a churn insulator. So in this example, the lower band has a churn number of plus one, and the upper band has a churn number of minus one. Okay, so now we're going to argue that such a chiral edge state, if we just focus on one of the two edges, this is an example of an anomalous edge state. Such an edge state can never appear in a standalone one-dimensional system. It can only appear if it has a partner moving in the opposite direction. If our system is defined on the strip, the other partner simply appears in the other edge. Let's uh, make that slightly more precise. Okay, so uh, by the way, here's the anomalous edge theory. This is the effective Hamiltonian, low energy Hamiltonian, that corresponds to states close to the Fermi level. At zero energy, right in the middle of the gap, Okay, so it's a one-dimensional Hamiltonian, integral over only kx. Delta kx here is the, dis the uh, distance in k relative to the point where the edge state crosses k equals zero. Okay, that's a non-universal point. That point depends on the particular system. And uh, the Hamiltonian is simply uh, proportional to v times delta kx. Uh, v is the slope or the group velocity at zero energy times psi dagger k psi k. Okay, so the claim is that this is an a, anomalous edge theory. This can never appear in a strictly one-dimensional system that should always have, a, for every right mover a, a mode, should have a corresponding left mover mode. And that's actually not hard to, to see. Okay, so here's a uh, general one-dimensional system on a lattice. It has a one-dimensional Brillouin zone. And the claim is that such a system can never have a right mover without having a corresponding left mover. And we can show that using this picture. Suppose that our system has one right moving mode uh, going through zero energy, but the Brillouin zone is periodic. So uh, uh, if we extend the, this uh, uh, linear dispersion to uh, all momenta, okay, it has to uh, return to the same energy uh, at k equals 0 and k equals 2 pi. So you see that if there's a right mover crossing the Fermi level, somewhere there also has to be a corresponding left mover. This uh, right mover cannot live on its own. The only way it can live on its own is if it appears at the surface of a two-dimensional system. And, there, uh, and, and then this uh, one-dimensional mode can actually terminate in the bulk band, as we saw before. Okay, so uh, this is one bulk band, this is another bulk band, and, uh, and then this uh, a, a right moving edge does not have to return to itself. So that's our first example of an anomalous edge state. 
Let's go into a slightly more complicated example. So our second example is going to be that of a, a helical edge state that appears at, at the boundary of a two-dimensional topological insulator. Okay, so here's the, uh, uh, here's the 2D topological insulator. As before, it's on a half plane, so it's a semi-infinite system. The system uh, has a boundary which is parallel to the x-direction. And as you saw uh, before in the course, uh, uh, the boundary of a 2D topological insulator has a helical edge state uh, bound to it. Okay, so uh, this is a helical edge state that has one right moving mode with, say, spin up, and one left moving mode with spin down. Okay, so we see that uh, unlike in the case of a uh, boundary of a churn insulator, this is not a chiral edge state because it has both a right mover and a left mover. And uh, um, these two edge modes are connected to each, to each other by time reversal symmetry that flips the direction of motion and also flips spin up to spin down. But what's special about this helical edge state as opposed to any other one-dimensional system, is that it has only a single right mover and a single left mover, which are related by time reversal symmetry. Okay, so here's again the spectrum of the system. The system is translationally invariant along x, so uh, we can draw it as a function of kx. Here's one of the two bulk bands. Suppose that there are only two. There's a gap, and here's the other bulk band. Okay, and uh, here are the two edge states uh, that live within the bulk gap. Okay, so they're, they're uh, uh, drawn here in red, that's the right mover with spin up, and blue, which is the left mover with spin down. Now, here is the low energy theory characterized by this effective Hamiltonian, uh, which uh, it describes these two uh, subgap edge states. Okay, so uh, it's a one dimensional Hamiltonian, describes uh, uh, states close to the Fermi level here at zero. Okay, and it's an integral over dx, um, uh, delta kx. Okay, this this uh, a point where the two uh, edge states cross is say at kx equals to pi, uh, and uh, um, uh, we sum over the two spins. Sigma uh, is equal to plus or minus one. Okay, and uh, uh, the two edge modes have an opposite velocity. Okay, plus or minus v times delta kx, which is kx minus pi, psi dagger psi. Okay, now, now uh, notice that the point kx equals pi, and k, uh, as well as kx equals zero, which is the same as two pi, are special. These points are actually invariant under time reversal symmetry. These are the time reversal invariant points. And at these points, the spectrum has to be doubly, de uh, doubly degenerate. This is a consequence of Cramer's theorem a 2D topological insulator has time reversal symmetry that squares to minus one, and that sends k to minus k. The points that uh, in, in momentum space that get sent to, to themselves have to have a double degeneracy for every state. This is the reason why these two uh, uh, edge modes have to cross exactly at that point. Okay, so as before, our, st our statement is that in the presence of time reversal symmetry, squares to minus one, such a helical edge state is anomalous, meaning that it can never appear, such a spectrum or such an effective low energy theory can never appear at a given energy in a strictly one dimensional system. How do we show that? So uh, once again, we can use a picture. So uh, here's our dispersion close to kx equals pi. We have these two counter uh, propagating edge states that cross each other and are, are Cromer's degenerate exactly at pi. Okay, and uh, now let's try to uh, complete the spectrum at all k's. We have a strictly one-dimensional system. There are just two bands. These two bands have to be periodic. But uh, moreover, we notice that at kx equals 2 pi, which is the same as 0, uh, there also has to be a Cromer's degeneracy. Okay, at every time reversal invariant point in k-space, there has to be a double, a, a double a degeneracy as a consequence of time reversal symmetry. So this means that uh, these two edge states would also have to cross here. Okay, and then when we try to complete the spectrum, we might complete it something like this. Okay, and uh, because of time reversal symmetry, kx is equivalent to minus kx. We can take k to minus k with respect to any time reversal symmetric point, for instance, with respect to the, k, to the point kx equals pi. So the spectrum 
has to be symmetric, a, a k to minus k, and it might look something like this. OK, so we see that there's no way we can connect these two bands to themselves without having another crossing with another a right mover and another left mover. OK, so a helical edge state with only one right mover and its time reversal partner, which is a left mover, can never appear in a strictly one-dimensional system. This immediately tells us that this type of helical edge state is actually anomalous. OK, and our final example of an anomalous edge state is going to be the Dirac spectrum that appears at the surface of a three-dimensional topological insulator. OK, so this has been uh, discussed uh, before in the course. So where uh, uh, we saw that if we have a three-dimensional topological insulator with time reversal symmetry that squares to minus 1, at the surface, there's a single Dirac uh, um, uh, a, a surface state, which is gapless, which is crossing through the bulk gap. Okay, and uh, the energy of this uh, Dirac spectrum um, it doesn't have to be such that the Dirac point crosses exactly zero energy, but it might. For, for convenience, let's, let's consider the case where this uh, a surface state with the Dirac spectrum crosses a zero energy, at least close to energy zero. OK, so uh, uh, this, is a, this is our surface state. It's uh, described by this simple low energy theory. OK, it's simply uh, the theory of a single two-dimensional Dirac fermion. OK, so uh, we have some Pauli matrices that uh, correspond to spin. And we have a two, a, a two by two Hamiltonian. Psi k here is a two-dimensional spinner with uh, k, a, k a, a, a psi up and psi down. And, uh, and this is our Hamiltonian that corresponds to this Dirac spectrum. OK, so um, now we'd like to show that uh, this Hamiltonian is anomalous, meaning that we can never have a freestanding two-dimensional system, which is time reversal symmetric, t squared equals minus 1, and is described at a given energy by this Hamiltonian and nothing else. OK, so how do we show that? It's, uh, there's actually a nice argument that shows it uh, without too much effort. So let's, let's imagine we uh, do have such a system and, and do proof by contradiction. So let's assume we have a strictly two-dimensional system where uh, close to energy zero, uh, our, our spectrum is described by this Hamiltonian with only a single Dirac fermion. OK, so now let's imagine breaking time reversal symmetry slightly by applying a magnetic field, a small magnetic Zeeman field, in the z direction. OK, so the Zeeman field couples to the spin of the electrons. So it corresponds to this uh, term, m times sigma z. So what does this uh, mass term do? It actually opens a mass gap right here in the, uh, uh, at the Dirac point of size 2m. OK, and m is proportional to the magnetic field B. OK, now. Uh, suppose we break time reversal symmetry weakly and open such a gap. Okay, but we saw before that if we open a small gap at a Dirac point, we'll have a, a, a new system whose whole conductivity is actually e squared over 2h times the sign of the, of the mass, uh, mass term that we added at the uh, uh, Dirac point. Okay, so this uh, follows from the fact that uh, uh, the system before adding this mass term was time reversal symmetric. That means that the Berry curvature everywhere in the Brillouin zone has to be essentially zero. We add a small mass. We add a, uh, a strong Berry curvature in the vicinity of the what used to be the Dirac point, and that uh, Berry curvature uh, in this vicinity integrates to half, okay, half of the of the Chern number. And everywhere else, the uh, Berry curvature is still zero because uh, this mass term didn't do anything there. So overall, what we obtain now is a new system, which is gapped and has an overall whole conductivity, which is e squared over 2h times the sine of n. Now, since the whole conductivity in a two-dimensional gap system of non-interacting electrons has to be a, an integer times e squared over h, this is actually impossible. So, uh, um, uh, we've reached a contradiction, which means that the two-dimensional time reversal symmetric uh, system 
cannot have a single Dirac point. Okay? There has to be another Dirac point somewhere in the Brillouin zone, unless our, uh, our, our 2D system is actually a surface of a higher dimensional, uh, uh, in this case, three-dimensional topological insulator. Okay, so uh, uh, this, uh, 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 this uh, uh, concludes the, uh, um, um, this demonstrates the fact that this edge state is actually uh, anomalous. So just to summarize, in this uh, video, we uh, discussed the general concept of an uh, anomalous edge state, that is an, a, a, uh, a, an edge state which is described by low, en low energy theory that cannot appear in, a, in the same dimension with the same symmetry class in a standalone d minus one dimensional system, but can only appear as the surface of a higher dimensional topological phase. Thank you.